You are listening to Gary Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Angelique, Shiloh, Daddy, and Xavier. And we are The Show. Be sure to tune in to Positive Power 21 Christian Media and Radio Network. Late Night with with Jerry Royce Royce Live Live in Baltimore, Maryland. Maryland. And be sure to check out our website at www.theshelters.online. Peace. Listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. Lord, I want to say thank you for being so good to me. I wrote a little something for you, but I must tell you, it's a different type of vibe.
on HSM PM. Pacific time, Nancy. We all about that rock life. And if you want to join us, you only need to do two things. Number one. You need to tune in to Positive Power, Double XI Radio, the place where royalty rocks. Number two. Tell your neighbor, don't look to the left, nor the right, because we're going straight to the truth with our girls. Hi, this is Rock Life with Zion, Zion Jones, listening to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Radio on Speaker Radio and Facebook Live. It's a little thing. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double XI. That's right, you tell them robot, you listening to Late Night with Jerry Boys Live Worldwide. Yeah, yeah, and tonight my special guest is Nina Taylor. That's right, born and raised in Philadelphia. Nina will be here and talk about her, her career on the internet. That's right, on internet radio and also terrestrial radio. It's going to be so exciting. Also, we have my guest host, that's right, you know as... Patrice Jackson from Pro Savvy Talk Show and I Am a Superwoman Radio Network. And just give everybody a heads up. This will be our last show for the spring. That's right, we're going to be taking a spring break, me and Miss Pro Savvy. So we'll be back real soon, real soon. So uh, you get a chance to listen to her on Late Night Radio on Friday night. That's right, with the team. The party line on Late Night Radio on Friday night, starting at 11.30. You can join us with Paula G, The Voice, Shay Samuel, Patrice Jackson, and Chanel Lynn Lloyd. We're going to have a ball, so come on out and hang out with us. Even Dr. Paul Kelly might pop in. That's right, we got a lot to talk about, y'all. That's right, Christian relationships, finances, homes, building businesses. That's right, all kinds of topics. Right, we're gonna be having topic. All right, so we probably bring Dr. Kelly to hang out with us. He's the moderator for Next Man Up. That's right, you heard him. Next Man Up starting at ten o'clock on Saturday morning. So come on, join us. You can catch the replays of Pastor Jack starting at nine. Awesome shows, right? So come on out, check us out. Catch the streaming on Spreaker Radio forward slash Positive Power Twenty One, or going out to iHeartRadio. Catch us at late night. Radio, that's right, late night with Jerry Boys Live and Friends on iHeartRadio. We want to thank all our sponsors and, and all our supporters. That's right, we appreciate you guys. That's right, don't forget about Daynet Watson at daynetwatson.com, D A N E T Watson.com. That's right, you're looking, for, you're looking for the start a home based business, give her a call. But if you want to enjoy some of the weight loss and health products that her 16-year-old company has established all over the world. Go out to daynetwatson.com. That's D-A-N-E-T Watson.com. Don't forget to go out to positivepower21.org and check out Who I Am, Next Man Up, the film, the documentary series featuring Brandon, Andre, and Reggie. So check it out, y'all. They got some powerful, powerful things they talk about being reared up by single moms and grandmothers, and, and they are successful brothers today. The type you want your daughter to marry, or maybe yourself, that's right. Or you want to be like, that's right, the excellent role models, and you catch them on Who I Am, that's right, come on out to Positive Power 21.1, and just hit Rent the Movie, that's right, Rent the Movie. All right, it's going to be awesome, y'all. What you say, robot? You are listening to Jerry Roy Slide. Worldwide podcast. You tell them, little buddy. All right, let's get our praise and worship on. All right, also don't forget about Purpose Matters. That's right, check out Patrice Jackson's new book called Purpose Matters. My Purpose Matter. Go out to My Purpose Matter. No, Yes, Purpose Matters.com. I think that's right. Yes, Purpose, Purpose Matters.com. Check out a new book. 
All right, we have it on our website. So I'm just waiting for a couple of little things to happen. And it'll be available on Positive Power 21.org. Don't forget about EmpowerMeBooks.com with Jessica A. Highsmith, Penn Alex J. That's right, Miracles. You want to read about Miracles? You're just not hearing en- enough of them today. That's right, we hear a-, a little bit about everything else, but not enough about Miracles. Check out Jessica A. A. Highsmith, Penn Alex J. on EmpowerMeBooks.com or check a book out on Amazon. Also, don't forget about Pastor's Time is available, Trials and Tribulations. Both editions are available for you on Amazon.com. Soon it'll be available for you on Pastor's Time. That's right. PTI is coming. That's right. Pastor Time International Teaching Bible School. That's right. Credited College will be available for you guys real, real soon. Looking forward to break out at the end of April. Look out for that. Our dean, that's right, the dean himself, Dr. Paul Kelly, his executive assistant, First Lady Marcia Kelly, and also Dr. Trinnell, and yours truly, Batman, part of the prize. God is good. God is good. Also available on Amazon is your instrumental with Ree. You hear our songs right here on Positive Power. Check out, y'all. So thank you everybody for joining us and welcome to Positive Power 21.org Christian Media. And you're listening to Late Night, Late Night Radio with Jerry was live worldwide. And my co-host, you know, Miss Pro Savvy Patrice Jackson is here with me. Alright, praise and worship time, y'all. You know God has been good. Just when you think things is tanking, he just come out of nowhere and bless you. All right, we just want to let you guys know that we've just been broadcasting on Fridays starting next week. That's right, with the engineering. You get a chance to check out the ladies. They're going to be broadcasting right here with me. All right, can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? 21, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Trilogy. I'm your host. I'm your host. You got me all night. Not all night. But just to, I guess we're here at 1030 with Nina Taylor. That's right. Nina Taylor's our guest. And my guest host is Miss Pro Savvy. She's Jackson. We all need to be lifted up and encouraged at all times. The Bible is a great source for encouragement. The Bible is a living word of God. It feeds us to the promise of God found in Scripture. Philippians 4, 4, 7 reads, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice and let everyone see that you're unselfish and considering all you do. Remember that the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything instead. Pray about everything. Tell God your needs. Don't forget to thank Him for His answers. You do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Can the church say amen? Can the church say amen? Amen. Oop, I forgot to cut my, my radio off. <laughs> All right. I hope y'all hear that. I might have been echoing. Yeah, sometimes Batman forget to do certain things. It's too, much, it's too many controls in here. All right. Let's get Miss Patrice Jackson. What's up, Pro Savvy? What's going on? How are you? Hey, Jerry. Hey. How are you? We good. We good. Shout out. How you doing? Everything good on your end in Cleveland? Cleveland. Everything is good. It's starting to warm up. Well, it's a little bit chilly today, but it's warming up, though. No yeah. more snow. That's right. We have fifties today in rain, so that means um the plants. Well, we got enough moisture in the, in the ground. <laughs> I don't think it can take any more. <laughs> the trees gonna start <laughs> tumbling over. Yeah. Other than that, everything is good. Look, shout out to Trent Gannison. He just came out of Vegas doing this thing. We heard you live, brother. What's going on, man? And we got Joe. That's right. Joe from India is, is hitting us up. What's up, man? What time of day is it over there, Joe? What time of day is it? And then we got Joanna. Right, just popped in. Hey, Karen, what's up, Karen? Is that no Cam? What's up, Cam? Cam Gill, what's going on? Praise the Lord. That's right, y'all. Michael Jenkins just jumped in there. What's going on, y'all? Yeah, we're so excited. Um, had a chance to go to my son's first track meet, and uh, man, this coach is gonna be working them this year. They're doing 13 meets, 13 meets. Last year, they only did like oh, seven. Wow. 
I think he said they did seven last year. Isn't that crazy? New coach. Wow. Yeah, he's not playing. That is a big, that's double. That's a big difference. No, that's a dude. You could be ready for and college. You got to think about practice in between. Yeah, yeah. And they be, they be in a weight room, you know, they take a break, you know, he, he get them strengthening. Cause last year, they had a lot of injuries. Um, I don't know what was mm-hmm. going on. They, some of their best runners, you know, sprinters were hurt. So, um, it was crazy. So we'll see what, how they do. My, my daughter's uh, team actually ran today also, but she didn't qualify. Mm-hmm. Cause she hasn't been to ten practice yet. She uh, just finishing up, um, you know, that fashion show production and her dance recital. So she didn't. She don't have. Even though she did do indoor, uh, so she in pretty good shape. She says. She says she ready. So um, I want to see my kids win this year. Last year they were just trying it out for the first time. <laughs> it was like that. It was like their practice <laughs> season. I was like, I want to see you win. I want to see some winning. So I can jump up and down. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got all that, you know, second season, you got to get used to it and get back in the groove. Yeah, that's right. I'm quite sure they'll make you, make you happy. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's good to sit out there and, and watch kids compete. It's nothing like watching, you know, competition, you know, friendly competition. And, uh, they, yep. and the kids, they go out there and root their friends on and their classmates and parents show up. You know, it's unlike it's different in football. Football, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's always like that marginal mistake of the referee. So most of the time you're fussing and mad with the referee. You're not even mad at the other team. You're mad at the referee. <laughs> so it's like, well, they just take the referee out the game. <laughs> take him out. We don't need him. I played football for a referee let for years. Let me do it. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And plus, they, maybe they should let more women referee the games, you know? Because one, the guys act like, because I guess because they like football so much, they want to be out there all day. It's like, look, this game need to be over. Stop! Stop! Right. Stop! Stopping the clock, you know, for a stupid call that wasn't yeah, real. Some football moms out there. Yeah, we got to like, get home and cook dinner. Gotta and get take home. Care of the family. That's right. We got soccer <laughs> practice. <laughs> we got to get out of here. Right. Game over. <laughs> like who won? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They That's should. Funny. They should do. I know we had one female. They had one female referee. Uh, one year, my my son played. She was pretty good too. She she could see. The other guys couldn't see. I remember one guy, I knew him, and I knew he couldn't see, you know. <laughs> and they had the nerve to have him on the sideline. <laughs> he was making all kinds of bad calls. I was like, what? Man, I said, Joe. Like, how did he get this job, huh? Oh, I said, aren't you like 90? I think I, I remember you working with me when I was in my 20s, and you were 60 then. <laughs> you got to be like 90. <laughs> He's out there. <laughs> he didn't call him touchdowns, and you're not even there to play. <laughs> Man, the boy was stopped at the one yard line. You stand at the other end of the goal. That was just jacked up. <laughs> well, you know, what can you say? You just a parent and you start something, they will kick you out. <laughs> they got that rule. They make you sign a contract. You know that? Did you know that? They make parents sign a contract? For little, really? Yeah, for little league. Well, well, I guess because you get those parents who really get into the game and um, start arguing with people. So I guess that's understandable. Sad it got like that though. Yeah, because because now it's about you know this is between you know your kid I'm um, going for a free ride to college versus him you paying or he not going. <laughs> so it's like yeah. it's a lot at stake. You know you talking about investment because parents be you know they don't they don't play they know a lot a lot more about the game than than coaches give them credit for. You know I mean after all most of the coaches are parents. <laughs> it's like how you get the job, guy? Um, you know my son played last year. Okay, so that qualified you to be the coach. Wow. Well, they give you these films to look at online and everything, and and then they certify you. Wow, I got a lot of confidence in you, buddy. Well, can I get a job? Well, I guess with extracurriculars being so underfunded, you kind of had no choice. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's how guys start off to become coaches in the NFL. We start at Little League. You start off as a parent coach. Flag football. Go to tackle. Next thing you know, you – your assistant coach in high school, you, you you're good at it. You won some championship, and then they, now you you got recruited by a college. Next thing you know, you win some championships. You're on the sidelines of the pro game. You know that's that's the road. That's the road they take. Got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, I used to date a girl sure. um, who father was an NFL referee. Yeah, the whole time I was seeing oh, her, really? I, ne- I never met him. He was always gone every weekend. He was gone on the road because he was actually um, like uh, he had a high real, real high position at Coppin State uh, University. So he was, you know, I never saw him. 
you know. And plus, I think he was a dentist. No, they the referees travel with the team. Yeah, some of them got different areas they do. You know, like uh, I guess, like I think they get scored too. They get scored, especially if oh. they do well. They make it to the playoffs, and then then the guys that got the best score cards get to do the Super Bowl. You know. So, um, yeah. oh, I did not know that. I didn't know they traveled. Yep, they sure do. They don't, I was hit, yeah. every day. They don't do no home games, you know. You know I mean, we was already complaining about that that guy that used that, that black guy that used to be uh, doing the Cleveland games all the time. I go square down. He's the favorite. <laughs> you guys are a little bit too much over there. I, and I told myself, well, maybe he just feel bad for him because they they need to win some games for the city. <laughs> New team. Mm-hmm. Ain't nice here. You know how sensitive we are about our sports teams. We yeah. try. Tina don't care no more. I can crack jokes on Cleveland Browns, and Tina don't care. She, I guess she think about the back of her mind. She got the Cavaliers. Yeah. How, how long that's going to last? I heard your your boy he trying to trying to um go to uh I think the was it the Philadelphia uh seventy sixes. I heard. I thought, <laughs> yeah, I thought I heard that um. Yeah, LeBron was trying to go to the 76ers one time. Or well, they were trying to lobby him there. Yeah. I, I mean, they probably try to lobby him there. They're always trying to do that. But, I mean, they always have something. When he got that, bought that house in California, they said he was going to the Clippers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Lakers or something like that. I don't know. Some of them guys look yeah. at history. You know, they want to finish their career. You know, I didn't realize he's been in the league for a long time now. You know? It, yeah, it did, go, it did go really fast. I see it, you know, for when he was in... But in high school, when they was following him, when he was early in high school. Yeah, yeah. What he has, like, uh, what, he has, what, three championships, something like that? Three? I think three. Uh, don't he got two with Miami and one with us? Oh, okay. See, so oh, I thought he, I thought he had three. I had to Google that. Yeah, two with Miami and one with Cleveland. Okay. All right, my man. So he's getting up there. He's trying to get mm-hmm. on. He's trying to get five. But, you know, you need to stay somewhere, you know, to get five. You can't just be jumping around. You talking about rebuilding, but I guess he goes where the other stars are. They just need some help, you know. All right. Well, we got Nina Taylor on the show tonight. Tonight, tonight, we're excited about that. Nina is, is uh, known throughout internet radio, and I think she also hosts a terrestrial radio station, I believe, in the Texas area. And um, she's like many of us, um, hold down a, a regular nine to five job and love radio. You know, no matter how tired and beat you are, you still can pull that that uh, that hype up. You know, that little piece left to say, "Yeah, radio." As soon as you turn that mic on, it's like you're all right. You know, you're on right. Because <laughs> I was thinking about it. All that. turns on. Yeah, believe me, I was thinking about it. Yeah, and I was reading her bio. She's in Ohio now. She's from somewhere else, but she's in Ohio now. Yeah, and I heard so. Nina, and, I, and I, uh, Nina's listening to us now. I heard Nina talking. Uh, she was being interviewed by Kimmy Kim, and she said, "Yeah, I'm in um, five countries, something like that." No, Nina, you're in, a, you're in more than five countries because you're on our network, and we are um, streaming in over 150 countries. That's right, military bases and and whoever want to download it, you know, I let them have it. They contact me. How can we get your show? I tell them, I can send them a link. Say, so get it right here, and on how iHeart Radio, iHeart. I yeah, congratulations to that. Yeah, thank you. I'm yeah, glad I've been to on, see you that um, I heart is out there. Yeah, I've been on, on I heart. And it was weird because I was going down. Um, we was driving down to Virginia, and I was like, "Oh man, it'd be so it'd be so nice if I could listen to my station on I Heart Radio because we usually listen to like jazz. It's easy to switch back and forth, you know. Instead of going on Spreaker and listen to our shows, because my wife was like, "Oh, can we listen to something else now?" You know, we try to change it up. Yeah. So um, I usually go to our heart because you know I could just tap it on my on my on my touch screen, you know, and um, so uh, I said, man, it would have been great if I would have had uh, late night on there, you know, I could just listen to it, and I didn't know it was on there. <laughs> I didn't know it. I had to Google myself. I Google myself <laughs> like last week. You ain't even know. Yeah, I had Google myself like last week, and I was like, I'm on our heart radio. <laughs> there it was late night. Yep. So I'm going to try to mix it up, put some of you other guys on there. Just uh, It's just a way I have to set it up on a file, and they will pick it up. So that was really cool, you know. So that's what it is. We were a Y. I Heart Radio. I heard a rumor. Maybe you heard it. Just know something. I Heart. Somebody told me I Heart has filed bankruptcy or something like that. What does, what does that mean? Are they, gonna, are, they, are they trying to streamline everything so they can sell it or... 
or they in trouble? You know, because I, I think they. Know. I mean, I know, I know it has been a big shake up between a lot of these podcasting sites, like uh, uh, what's the other one, the SoundCloud one? Oh, they in problems um, too. They've been changing up a lot of stuff, so you never know. I mean, when if the industry starts to change, if you ain't keeping up fast enough. Things like that does happen. Yeah, I was kind of surprised with Aubrey because I think, you know, I would think that's the go-to place to go because, you know, a lot of people want to have live stream on those Internet platforms, and they do charge a fee. But, you know, they're, they're a little high because I, I think I went to inquire about it, and I think it was a friend's discount, and it still was going to be high. Yeah, she said, yeah. Wow. Like, All right, well, let me give you a call back. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> they, they bring that cost down, you know, it'll be everybody's go-to, you know, place to go and then make some money on advertising i mean they got a lot of people listening to our heart they should be make they should rake in it be raking in our advertising dollars you know i don't know yeah. but i know i'm gonna do, i'm gonna do research that maybe it goes on to subscription you know mm-hmm. that's a big thing too to get people to sign on to sort of subscription so you don't have to listen to that but they but their app is in like all the cars like if you rent a car the app is there. If you buy a car, the app is already there. Especially people streaming. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, people oh. Bluetooth, um, you know, their phones to their cars. And our heart it comes with your app. You don't have to download it. It's, it's right there, like YouTube. You know, it's like um, your common channel, you know. Yeah, and there's something, you know, you have like a common app. Hmm. It's an app that's like on everybody's phone. Everybody has it. That means you big. I mean, that's a big, that's a big company. <laughs> you got an app, you know, they come with the phone. That's cool. All right. Yeah, that means that you have a lot of market. <laughs> All right. A lot of market. All right, we're going to listen to a quick advertisement, and then we come back. We're going to listen to a little bit of Nina Taylor, and um, then we're going to have her come on the show and talk to us, teach us something. All right. So here we go, everybody. So hang tight. <laughs> You are listening to Joe Slide Worldwide Podcast. Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, Nanny. We all about that rock life. And if you want to join us, you only need to do two things. Number one. You need to tune in to Positive Power, Double XI Radio, the place where royalty rocks. Number two. Tell your neighbor, don't look to the left, nor the right, because we're going straight to the truth with our girls. Hi, this is Rock Life with Zion, Zion Jones, listening to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Radio on Speaker Radio and Facebook Live. How you doing everybody? I'm Nina Taylor and here is this week's Gospel News. Contemporary gospel artist Jonathan McReynolds, a native of Chicago, Southside, learned to play drums and keyboards prior to taking up singing in high school. He was briefly a member of the group Mind Over Matter. McReynolds recorded a short set of songs and distributed it to family and friends with no intention of an official release. But it reached the hands of John Hanna, a local pastor and DJ who aired the material on a Chicago radio station. The very unofficial EP was eventually released to the public and showcased Jonathan McReynolds' intimate fusion of modern R&B, jazz, and contemporary music. In May 2012, his single, I Love You, re- Billboard's Top Gospel Songs chart. His proper debut album, Life Music, followed that September on Light Records and hit the top half of the Billboard Top 200. So did his follow-up album, Life Music Stage 2, which topped the gospel charts after its release in 2015. It produced two top 10 gospel songs, Pressure and Gotta Have You. He landed in the top three of the album's charts for the third time in a row with Sessions in the summer of 2016. Lee Williams began performing gospel music as a youngster at the age of eight. He sang with his uncle, a member of a group called the Gospel Stars, put together as a companion group featuring Lee Williams and his three brothers. Lee Williams' uncle also formed a group called the Spiritual QCs. That was in 1962. QC, which stands for Qualified Christian Singers. And when the outfit broke up in 1968, Williams took the name for his own group. Although the Spiritual QCs toured off and on over three decades, 
It wasn't until the late 90s that their music was documented extensively. Williams' group peaked commercially with their 2000s hit, Good Time, which entered the top 10 of Billboard's gospel albums, earned the group Traditional Quartet of the Year at the Gospel Music Excellence Awards, and was nominated for Best Gospel Album at the Soul Train Music Awards. Williams' group continued to record and tour throughout the rest of the decade. Gospel singer Rance Allen founded the Rance Allen Group in Detroit in the 1960s and was fronted by the band and his soulful soaring vocals ever since. The traditionally trained black gospel group was the first traditional gospel group to incorporate rock, jazz, and soul into their music. They were heavily influenced by contemporary Christian music. The Rance Allen Group scored a top 30 R&B hit in 1979 with the song I Belong to You. The group's recordings for Gospel Truth, Capital, and Stax proved quite popular among gospel audiences and had some success attracting soul fans as well. Rance Allen continued singing, recording, and performing with his group up until the next millennium, releasing Miracle Worker with the Rance Allen Group in the spring of 2000. The movie Black Panther continues to dominate the box office worldwide, grossing in just a little over a month $1.2 billion in sales. Here's a list of the top 20 highest grossing African American films to date. Number 20, Sweetback. 19, 42, starring Chadwick Boseman. Number 18, Little Man, starring Marlon and Sean Wayans. Number 17, Think Like a Man. Number 16, Ray, starring Jamie Foxx. Number 15, Big Mama's House 2. Number 14, Selma. Number 13, Ride Along, starring Kevin Hart and Ice Cube. Number 12, Dream Girls. Number 11, Lee Daniels, The Butler. Number 10, Straight Outta Compton. Number 9, Big Mama's House, starring Martin Lawrence. Number 8, The Color Purple. Number 7, Boomerang. Number 6, The Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps. Number 5, Bad Boys. Number 4, Bad Boys 2. Number 3, The Nutty Professor, starring Eddie Murphy. Number 2, Dr. Doolittle, starring Eddie Murphy. And the former number one highest grossing African American film until Black Panther was Coming to America, starring Eddie Murphy. It grossed $595 million in sales worldwide. Well, that's your top 20 list of the highest grossing African-American films and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. All right, let's talk about Nina Taylor while she's not, a mic not open. <laughs> Born and raised in Philadelphia, Nina Taylor is a veteran of the entertainment industry. Nina started at the age of five dancing and singing with her family. She's a professional actress, model, voiceover talent, songwriter, and musician. All right. I got that. I'm too loud. All right. She's appeared in several radio and TV spots, including commercials for the 4-H Club, Cincinnati Police Department, McGraw-Hill, Big Bear, plus the Shattersteins department store and more. Nina co-wrote and sang the opening theme song for a video music show in Ohio where she now lives. Oh, I thought she lived in Texas. Not bad. All right. You can be, Nina can be seen in commercials for state auto insurance and, and so many other places. All right. Let's talk to her. We're not going to read her whole bio. We're going to let her tell us about herself. All right. Sound good, everybody? All right. Let's open up the mic for the tree. Jackson and Nina Taylor. What's up, Nina Taylor? What's up? What's up? How you doing, Jerry? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm awesome. Hey, Nina. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Doing good. Good to hear from you tonight. Yeah, yeah, veteran. Wonderful. Well, how, Jerry? How are you feeling? I'm feeling much better. Um, but you know, you can always do better. Always could do better. But thanks yeah. for asking. I know I had a throat situation going on about uh, three weeks ago, which, you know, I need, I need my voice. I need to yell at my kids during the day. And, you know, <laughs> I'm right. on the radio in the afternoon and we we're just doing so many things. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I can talk. So for two days, I had nothing. I, mm. I just had to be quiet for two days. Wow. <laughs> mm, two days. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Mm. 
So you had to write things down. Hmm. <laughs> well, we're glad you're back. I'm so glad you can join us. I, I really apologize for, for that. I, I, normally, we do not miss time. But Teresa and I, we do not miss time on the radio. We are always here. And, well, um several days. If you're, if you're under the weather, then, you know, there's nothing to do. Because, like I said, for two days, I was just here in bed. I couldn't do anything. I I didn't go to work. I wasn't on the radio for two days. Um, it was just kind of, it was weird, but... You know, sometimes you just you, you just got to shut it down for a little bit. Yeah, sometimes you do. And I, and I hate not <laughs> being on here because we actually <laughs> planned it. I'm sorry, Patrice. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to talk over you. I was just saying you got to do what you got to do, especially when you use your voice as much as you do in business. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Well, you know, I teach school during the day. Yes, you need that voice. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. I yeah, need that voice. Right here. Uh, that takes a lot of <laughs> voice. Right. Put that stick down. <laughs> yeah, you got to yell at the kids, you that's know. Right. They, they, they Put look that forward down. To that. Stop hitting right. him, you know. They look forward to that, too. <laughs> you know, they, you know they, that's how they feel wanted, <laughs> you know. They do. They yeah, do. They love mm-hmm. that tension. That's right. All right. So, Nina Taylor, we read a little bit about your bio, but we want to know who is Nina Taylor? <laughs> who is she? <laughs> you know, when I ask people that, it, it, it feels funny you know i mean it doesn't feel any kind of way but when somebody asks you that it's like uh where am i well like, like what you want to i've know? said you know i'm just really just an average retired working person who you know i get up every day i go to work and i do radio every day i i've got a you are absolutely right i do have a show i have a sunday morning show in texas um in addition to a show here in ohio oh. so you know with with our modern technology you can have a show all over all over the world, you know, right. which right. I do. Um, but I actually have a Sunday morning uh, broadcast that airs, that's been airing now uh, going on uh, a year in Texas every Sunday. <laughs> 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 but um, I do radio. I, I, I knew when I was 12 years old that I wanted to be on the radio. Yeah. I wanted to be on television also. You know, I said, yeah, I want to do radio and TV um, since I was 12. Yeah. Um and it happened, you know, five years after I made that statement, well, six years, I was actually doing it, you know, <laughs> six years at the age of yeah. 19, and I've been doing it ever since. That's incredible. Hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I was the same way, too. I'm not sure if you remember um, Citizen Band Radio. I think we mentioned before CB radios were real popular in the, in, I think, the 80s. It must have been 70, late 70s, early 80s. Citizen Band Radio? Yep, Citizen Band hmm. Radio. They had ham radios, which were like amateur. There's a lot of amateur <laughs> radio clubs were out back in the 70s and uh-huh. 80s. And it was before, you know, people had cell phones because that was the way you could communicate outside uh-huh. your, your community, you know, without dialing a phone. Yeah. Yeah, and and that was part. Uh-huh. I was. I okay. think I might have been twelve, fourteen. I think I got the got as a as a gift. Graduated middle school, and uh, my friends mm-hmm. and I, and we was on the radio like all night. We loved talking to strangers. You know, of course back then it was okay <laughs> to talk to strangers. Of course now you can't do that, <laughs> but we had a ball. I mean, we was on till three, four in the morning during the summer, and I, I said, "Wow!" And I actually <laughs> wanted to go to school for it myself, but um, my dad was like. Oh, it has to be a school located here <laughs> in Baltimore. It was like, there's no radio schools here in D.C. So it so it didn't happen. Oh, shoot. My dog going to call drop. I got to dial everybody back in. All right, hold tight, everybody. Let me play a song real quick. Let me let me get them back in. I thought I heard something drop. All right, hold tight. Let's, let's listen to this one by Shalita Mason. This is a new one. always fun in, in my uh, my mom you know 
I'm had sorry been, about the they young had also been singing since they were kids, as well as uh, the grandparents. So we're actually five generations of, of preaching, singing people. <laughs> of of if five generations back, we can go where it all started with uh, my great grandfather um, was a preacher and also tremendous had a tremendous voice. His kids all were singers and. You know, my grandparents and then their kids, and we're just kind of carrying it on. So, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I think that's how it is with most families. Did you guys, <laughs> yeah, did you, you guys connect it to you me? Have a, are, y'all, huh? are y'all connected to me? Because, um, what happened is the Skype had dropped for some reason. I thought I heard it drop, so they <laughs> so we didn't get a chance to, uh, the audience couldn't hear you guys because it disconnected you from um, Spreaker and Facebook Live. So, oh, yeah, okay. sorry. Okay. So if y'all want to go back and start that over again, okay, good for me. You want to start that question again, Matrice, that you was talking to Nina about? Oh, she was, yes. So I asked her, you know, what was the progression of her career, um, and, you know, in the connection with her family? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was just saying, you know, like anyone else, you know, started as a, as a child with, uh, you know, dancing school and the acting all started in school and just, from there, just wanting to do more stuff. And I was uh, actually interviewed on the radio at the age of 12, and that's mm-hmm. when I knew. I said, I want to be on radio and TV, you know, when I grow up. That's what I want to do. <laughs> um, by the age of 19, I had already gotten an internship, and they hired me um, after the internship, and that's really where it all started. Wow. Um, and then throughout the course of the years, you know, um, I found an agency and started doing voice work. Um, and from there, you know, you're, you're on TV, you're doing stuff on radio, um, and just different opportunities have come about. Then in uh, 2006, I said, you know what? <laughs> he said, I had not been off the radio more than maybe a couple of days since the age of 19. I just had to, like, step away from it for a little while just for my own sanity. I just hadn't done anything else since the age of 19. You know, I've had other jobs, of course, but... Mm-hmm. I took a little break from it in 2006. Um, after about four years, I started going, oh, you know, it's time to go back. I was like, when are you going back on the radio? When are you back? And they were, at the time, there was really not many opportunities here, you know, where I lived at. So I was thinking about, you know, heading somewhere else, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> to uh, look for some additional opportunities. And in 2012, I was uh, working with some artists. And I had to uh, do an interview for one of the artists who was actually flying at the time when he was supposed to be doing a radio interview. And this was for, you know, the station where I work at in Texas. And I asked him, would it be okay if I did the interview for the artist because he was unavailable? And he said, sure. After I did that interview, uh, the owner of the station said, wow, you know, who is she? You know, I really like her. I want to have her mm-hmm. back. And let's, you know, talk to her about her. You know, what does she do and all that? So after that, then the owner of the station wanted me to, you know, kind of like do some voiceovers for them and uh, said he wanted me to be, you know, where are you? Can you move here and work for us? <laughs> uh, thanks to technology, I was able, you know, to do everything that they asked me to do right here from, you know, at the time I was doing it at the, uh, at someone else's studio. And then I eventually built my own studio, which I have now mm-hmm. and just started doing it from there. And now I have my own show, um, on at 6 a.m. Sunday morning show. And I've never, I've done gospel radio since 97. I've never had a Sunday morning show before. Wow. <laughs> Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, I was listening to that story mm-hmm. on Kimmy Kim's show. I said, wow, you've been in radio mm-hmm. for a very long time. And, and it still seemed, well, it seemed new to us because we all just mm-hmm. really just been plugged in for the, like, I guess the last four or five years. And, you know, it's coming up July, yeah. I believe, will make our first time we had connected with each other in 2007. Uh, I'm sorry, July 2016, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's when we first met. Is that the first time we spoke? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> yeah. So I was okay. coming up with, first I thought it was three years. I'm going to have to look back because I saw it in the email, our very first email. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It's been some time. So you like me. I still have emails from everybody from we. <laughs> right. You keep everything. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Archives. That's what I believe in. So Nina's, um, now it's, it's been a, a very nice ride. Um, What's the difference to you, you know, since you've been doing the past, I say the past three years than, than prior to you? 
What's been the difference in radio? You know what? So much has changed since I started. It was 1989. Um, so much has changed. When, when I first started, uh, they were still playing records. Mm -hmm. They were kind of like in the middle of that transition from cassettes. You know, we were playing records, carts, and CDs mm -hmm. and cassettes. <laughs> all that you have like you have to come in like an hour early you have to stack up all this music that you're going to be playing I mean everything was very very physical and you had to manually do everything mm -hmm. so I remember when we got the first computer when you know when we had like a our first automated show where the music was just automatically coming up you didn't have to actually play it yourself I remember mm -hmm. programming uh, the music into the computer and thinking wow this is so much easier right. you know um, it, it's changed quite a bit I, I love you know the digital sound is, is the best it's ever been mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the stations that I'm on just recently went from AM to FM after all these years it's been wow. an AM station since for over 60 years and then how <laughs> wow. after all this time, you know, so it's just, and that's actually the station where I started. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's amazing just to hear and, you know, the difference, you know, I was like, wow, you sound good on AM. You really sound good on FM. I'm like, Oh, that's <laughs> great. You know, and then listen <laughs> on a, you know, a digital sound on a computer is it, just, you know, the sound is, is, is unmatched actually. Yes. It's, it's great. I'm happy about it, and, you know, I think it, it demands that the quality of what we're playing mm -hmm. now has to be top of the line because you can hear every little thing, That's you know. That's right. You sure can. Yeah. Everything. So tell us a little bit of, before uh, Patrice <laughs> asks the question, we're going to go to music break. But I just want to ask you, um, tell us a little bit about your about your radio station. So many people want to uh, build their own home studios. Tell us a little bit about your home studio. Well, my home studio is very simple. Um, I think the first thing is you got to get a good computer, lots of memory, um, a very good computer. I actually had to invest in a new one. I got it about about a year ago, so mm -hmm. it's still kind of new. And then I had to invest in a great microphone, which the one that I have, it was like around $300. So it is. It's definitely an investment. And if you're not making money with it, you don't need to get it. Mm -hmm. you know? That's right. <laughs> because... It's an investment, you know, and then there's a couple of things you need, uh, uh, you know, a power source uh, mm -hmm. that can be costly. You know, it depends on what you, you're doing. Now, of course, I'm not mixing music and all that, so I don't need, you know, a whole lot because it's usually just um, two, three tracks. Sometimes I have used as many as four or five different tracks at one time, but it's just still mm -hmm. just me and just having, I think, knowledge of, of mixing and being able to put things together is good or have somebody who can do that for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I did have someone who was doing all that for me, but you, I said, you know what? I got to learn how to do all this myself. That's right. You know, <laughs> because it's, it's almost impossible for somebody, you know, you, you get so busy that it's almost impossible to have somebody doing all this for you. You're either going to be broke or it's not mm -hmm. going to get done. So mm -hmm. I definitely had to, um, you know, get with some people who have studios also, and they refer me to some, you know, rather relatively simple programs. Programs that I'm using are kind of basic for a lot of stations, radio stations. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's working out quite well. I'm, I'm doing commercials for stations all over the country, and um, it, it's working out real well. That's right, good investment. You know, it, yeah. it, it's good to be able to do. I had to last Sunday one of my stations in Florida had an emergency. It's like, can, you know, can you do it? Can you do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually got out of bed and, and cut a commercial wow. <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning. They had to air at six ten in the morning. Wow. Now think if I had to drive across town to a studio or something, mm -hmm. or if I was relying on someone else, I would have never been able to do that job, you know, that's but right. you know, that's, that, that's awesome. where, that's where it's at now. You, you, it's right there if you have a you know good set up your house your own you know studio area or it's it's so much easier it just made my life so much simpler yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. awesome all right patrice um you go ahead and ask a question and we're going to take a little short music break all right cool mm -hmm. um my question was what's your favorite thing about podcasting and the radio and being on the radio well <clears throat> 
You know, I never, one thing I never really thought about was, you know, being well-known or, you know, what you say, popular. I want to be a star. It's like that was never part of anything that I've ever wanted to do or, you know, having people recognize me different places, even going out of town and having your friends call you and say, you know, I heard you on this, I heard you with this person, I heard you with that, you know, it's such a blessing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think just being able to, to reach family and friends from all over the world at one time, you know, without it costing them or inconveniencing them, I think that is probably the best thing about it. As when I first went on the radio, um, my dad, you know, he was still alive there in Philadelphia, and I would call him and I would lay the phone down so he could actually listen to me on the radio from the phone. <laughs> oh, wow. You know? Yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? Because he wanted to hear me, but there was no other way. How how was he going to do it? You know? Mm-hmm. So now if you got a computer, you know, you can, you, can, you can be right there with them. You can look at them. You can even see them doing it, <laughs> um, you know, through their podcast. You can watch them do it. Or you can listen to anybody doing anything from That's anywhere right. in the world. It, it's it's a miracle and it's a blessing, it I think. You know, and I, I just think, that's what I was thinking. Man, my dad would have really, you know, he would have been tuning in every day, you know, to, <laughs> like to my dad. everything. <laughs> yeah, like my dad, hey, dad. Yep, they tune in. They're your biggest <laughs> fans. All right, thanks for asking yeah. question. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a short music break. And this is one of my favorites. I thought this was a good song to start off the. Uh, the mid, the second segment of the show, and this one is called "Grace" by by Crystal Cameron. You take my pain and you turn it into life You take my faults and you somehow make them right You hear my cries when no one else did Living 
that was by Crystal Cameron. That was called Grace. All right, we're talking to Nina Taylor. You can hear Nina all over the world. She's been in the industry for over 20 years now, and she's a station promoter, and, and she loves gospel music. All right, so I got a good question for you, Nina. Now, Nina, you, you get a chance to hear them all. Um, you entertain independent gospel artists and um, some of the greats out there on your shows. Because I, I listen to your, your gospel news uh, program all the time. And I just love uh, the report you gave. But I'm going to tell you, this last one you did on the movies mm-hmm. was my favorite of all of them. <laughs> What? How you choose? You, you know, know, my favorite one was the one that topped. I did. Um, there was some research done about the uh, the best places for African American people to live. Oh yeah, I like that one too. You remember that one? Yes, I that sure was kind of one of my. That's one of my personal favorites. Yeah, and then was. everybody likes the the one that we did on um, uh, how to get people to come back to church. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Do you remember that one? I don't um, remember the that one. The top 10 reasons why people leave churches. <laughs> what, was, what was the top? Give it to us. What was the top 10? I want to hear that. I, yeah, I don't have my notes in front of uh, me, but uh, the main, uh, I think I remember it was like top 10 reasons were people leave because they're uninformed, because they're not involved, because mm. the, the pastor is not one-on-one with them. You know, mm. it, was, it was a lot of stuff that made, a lot of sense, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. That um, one, the and first then one. definitely, I gave uh, the reasons why they leave and how to get them back or how to keep them. And a lot of people really enjoyed that one. I mean, I get I get emails saying, you know, I mean, hey, that was really great yeah. for me. It gave me something to think about. You know, can you send me a copy of that? The, those your notes <laughs> because I want to give it to my pastor. You know, or <laughs> and I thought, wow, people are really paying attention. Yeah, they do. Because we stream, we stream. A lot of times, I don't get a get a chance to always play them during our interviews because we do like normally we do two short interviews but when I stream it and yeah. I catch it I was like wow that was a good one especially this one about mm-hmm. the movies because they, all of those were good movies really really good they movies they were fantastic movies yes. did yeah. you <laughs> did you include Life we, me and Dr. Kelly was just talking about that movie Life with Life. Martin Lawrence <laughs> Martin Lawrence and uh, Bernie Life Mac. didn't actually make the list I, I know I'm surprised because that was one of the best well, my wife loves, uh, uh, of course, her favorite one was uh, um, Coming to America. That's like, she watches, she don't care when it comes on, she's looking at it. That's her all-time fan. That was the, mm-hmm. that was the number one, wasn't that the number one, Coming to America? I mean, Black Coming Panther to America, was number one. Coming to America, absolutely. Yeah, Black Panther, well, I think, was number one. Well, Black Panther now. is now, so Coming yeah. to America is now number two. And you know what's funny about that? Because Coming to America, you know, remember, that, that movie was up, people was only paying like $8 to go to the movies. Now it costs, what, $15, $30? Ooh. Or a subscription. Yeah, you know we paid uh, we paid twenty dollars to see Black Panther. Wow! The first time, just one person, yeah. one ticket. Twenty dollars. One ticket. One ticket. Whoa! I think we're going to pay mm-hmm. that. So it was a special theater with like the reclining seats and the food comes out to you and all that. Yes, they had all that. They had yeah, it was the reclining seats, the heated seats, and the Ooh. waitress come around and bring you food. Yeah, all that. But the ticket and you see, you you pay for all that separate. Mm. I think the food was even higher that day too. Yeah. So people have been making some serious money, and you know, my personal trainer was one of the uh, actors in that movie. Oh yeah, I heard that. I heard the episode. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, he he was he was very excited. Yeah, about he that. was. Um, yeah. yeah, he was one of the extras. You know, he was one of the the people who were standing up on the rocks, and, mm-hmm. and he was one of the fighters at yeah. the end. You know, remember when they were fighting mm-hmm. when everybody was fighting at the yeah, end? He talked about it. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, he did Good timing, you know, all that <laughs> mad. I guess they didn't really have time to be playing around with you. So if you had good time, you were in. Yeah, that was awesome. That was yeah. a good interview. <laughs> Well, he, yeah, he does karate, and he's a stuntman also. That's how he, you know, he gets a lot of jobs uh, doing yeah. stuntman work and stuff. So yeah, that was a it, good it, interview. It's really amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is amazing. And because, of course, one of our podcasts is making it big right now. He uh, got a break on Empire. Uh, just shot a uh, commercial mm-hmm. with MGM uh, Grand here in, in the mm-hmm. DC area. So uh, we watched one of our own um, really make it big. Matter of fact, Empire uh, debut tonight. Uh, uh, whatever season yeah yeah 
Yeah, he actually supposed to come well, to my studio. Well, I was actually studio. doing an interview, so I had to record it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to get him on your show. He's <laughs> he's an exciting guy, and things are really looking up for him. We're looking for yeah. him big and better things. One day, talking about another Black Panther movie. They're looking for another Black superhero. Mm-hmm. Do you, now, in your opinion, Nina, you think mm-hmm. this is going to open doors up for more? Cause remember, Luke Cage is out there. Luke Cage is really good. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it may be some situations going on now that I think Disney, it's a little stuff going on with the studios now but luke cage is a mm-hmm. really good mo- uh, um, s- series on netflix have you seen that one yet no i've heard about it you know i try to try to know about everything you know sometimes it's impossible but i really do think it's going to open up the doors because you know what movies like black panther what does for all of us is what it does is show that you know our value mm-hmm. that you can make a movie with all black cast because remember 20 years ago we couldn't have a movie with just all of us in it (laughs) and expected to make money that kind of money even though they did (laughs) what you said 1.2 billion is that what you said one two one point two billion i knew it was the day that i did that it was 1.2 billion i'm sure it's more than that now and that was uh i wrote that like a week ago Mm. so i'm sure it's past that now it's 1.2 billion excuse me last tuesday because <clears throat> I haven't seen it a second time. I had actually had to leave early because one of our podcasts was debuting her first show here live. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. we couldn't go to the show that we was trying to get to see. We had to go see another one that ran like 30 minutes later. So I missed um, the ending. <laughs> yeah. So, um, really? What a movie. Well, I'm going to be seeing it for the third time uh, this weekend because one of my friends from school actually has not seen it yet. All right. So... I said, let's roll. You know? right, that's right. <laughs> now, um, now, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let Patrice ask that question. But before we get away from the subject, I just want to ask you, in your opinion, why do you think that movie mm-hmm. is so successful? <sighs> wow. Marvel Comics, I think, has a lot to do with that. People, Marvel always makes fantastic films. All their films have been great, from Captain America uh, the Avengers, all of them have been fantastic. So I think it already had high expectations. We knew it cost a lot to make. Uh, Chadwick Boseman, you know, he's been, everything he's been in has been yeah. fantastic. So I think his popularity, uh, along with all, you know, they're like, Andrew Bass is going to be in, oh, uh-huh. you know. Uh, um, I, I don't know. I, I just think it was just, it's just time. It's just our time. Yeah. Um, it just proved that, you know, we can make a movie and be, and be bold and be chocolate and and be successful, you know, mm-hmm. just 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 bold, like we are, you know. There wasn't a lot of elaborate makeup mm-hmm. um, or anything like that, you know. Superimposed uh, bodies. This was everybody in their raw yeah. self, you know. If you see any of them doing interviews, this is how they look, yeah, they you look know. Good. Yeah, good looking and, people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything was beautiful, and and it should show Africa. Uh, in a such a beautiful light, even though it's a fictitious city, yeah. um, still, you know, we're talking about Africa. And, and just remember, you know, people, nobody wants to hear anything about Africa. You know, genealogy is another thing that I'm very much into. You don't have time mm-hmm. to hear about all that. But, <laughs> we, <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm one of those people. I've always embraced Africa and just, it's just about time. I think it's just, it just proved that, mm-hmm. you know, we could be just what we are and be marketable and be valuable and be entertaining and all we needed. Just like uh, uh, many of the people who came before us have said, mm-hmm. we're not asking for anything but the opportunity. That's, That's right. all. That's all we want. You know, we'll take it. Open up the door. Just let me in and I'll take it from there. That's right. You're right. And I think. To me, that's the first time you you really have seen Africa in a really good light. Because I mean, all the other African movies with mm-hmm. was Tarzan, you know, and the slaves were based in the <laughs> background, and then it was about slavery when it was being snatched from yes. Africa. So this is really, yes, really the first absolutely. time, besides you know the one that was about the lions and you know born to be free that you saw Africa and, mm-hmm. and it wasn't looking dusty and everything is sandy looking. It was beautiful and vibrant. Or, like you yeah, said. or Africa. We're talking about South Africa and apartheid. You mm-hmm. know, all negative, all negative. Slavery, yep. all negative. Um, where these things happen and we need to know about these things, but let's see the beauty of Africa. That's and right. I think 
it showed the beauty of Africa, and I think that's what made us all so proud. I mean, people came out of the movie, just we just all came out so happy. Mm-hmm. We don't even know why. We, we're just happy. Yeah. You know, we're just happy about, you know, just the whole, it was an experience, you know, and it, they would say that people in Africa were coming out of the mu- the movies just dancing and yeah, just, just so excited. It. it just made, I think it was just that pride mm-hmm. that we just had just from seeing. This, this is us. This is what we yeah. are, and it's beautiful. You know, right. beautiful, and beautiful. it was just a, a joy. That's why. That's why I will pay to see it a third time, mm. and then when it comes out on DVD, I will probably own several copies of it too. That's right. That's right. They sell, they don't sell <laughs> DVDs, do they? <laughs> you got to get a download, huh? I said, do they sell DVDs? I only have a DVD player. Anymore. Yeah, they still do sell DVDs. <laughs> they don't work. Wow. You know, one of the things I was disappointed was Killmonger. I have to look Killmonger up because I didn't believe that Killmonger was dead. But, you know, with Marvel, anything can happen because I, re- I was really big in Marvel um, comics back in the day. And almost mm-hmm. everybody had uh, once passed one time and came back. Even Superman had died and came back. And even Captain America, <laughs> all those guys yes. were, were brought back where they retired and someone else became that character, which a lot of people don't know. And what was uh-huh. so deep that people don't re- know about Black Panther? Black Panther is the reason why Captain America. America and Wolverine exists because his suit is made out of the same material that Captain American Shield is mm-hmm. made out of. Because it, it's, it, the movie okay. is really deeper well, than see, what people think. If you think. want to get into the history of it, now I can take you even deeper than that. Uh-oh. Originally, this movie was supposed to be made back in the nineties. Right? Did you know that? Actually, it was and post, guess it was who they World wanted to play the Black Panther? Oh, you're talking about oh the physical movie. Oh, I thought you were talking about the origin of Black the Panther. The physical movie. They were going to make this movie back in the '90s, but it was like, oh, it'll never work. You know, this all black film about Africa. It'll never work. And they wanted Wesley Snipes. Oh yeah, I heard about play. that. Yeah, Wesley Snipes. Yeah, he you heard trying, about that. I think <laughs> he was trying. I think he was behind that, trying to get that to, to happen. Because you know, he ended up doing. That's why he ended up doing Blade. Because it, it wasn't going to happen with him being Black <clears throat> Panther, but also I was going to go deep because Black Panther actually was um, was was during the time before World War Two, because that material that his suit is made out of that you know that they grow in that country, mm-hmm. it's, it comes from from out mm-hmm. of space. The aliens brought it here as part of some kind of meteorite mm-hmm. that hit Africa, but that same chemical was stolen and taken from that country, and that's how. They made Captain America see him. Captain America is from World War uh, Two, if I'm not mistaken, and so is Wolverine. Uh-huh. Remember Wolverine? He fought like maybe Africa, and maybe before that because because Wolverine he he was in like every war. He fought in the Civil War, the World War One, World War mm-hmm. Two. He was in all those wars. And remember his his bones was made out of that material. See a lot of people know that because remember he could drink. Remember Black <laughs> Panther could drink it. Remember he could drink it. And he can drink uh-huh, something else, yes. and it takes. Well, that's what. That's how they uh, brought Wolverine to life with that with that chemical. So it's a lot to it. It's a really deep story, man. Really deep. <laughs> All right. Well, we can talk. Well, I can talk about comics. It's amazing, yeah. and, and the, a lot, the story was actually the the Black Panther story was written by Marvel back in the sixties. Yeah, Black Panther went through a lot. See? He went. He fought. He fought against the Ku Klux Klan. He uh, um, mm-hmm. he he been through a lot. Uh, Black Panther. He's been. He's really a deep character. Really deep. You got to check. You guys have to check it out. Plus, you got to look at. You just follow the history. The Marvel films mm-hmm. and Black Panther was introduced, which was leading up to this movie in the second Captain America film. Right. Right, because he know Cap. Cap know <laughs> Cap knew a little bit about his existence because that's where, he, like I said, that's what his shield is made out of. Exact, exact material. Mm-hmm. Yeah, real deep stuff. A lot of German scientists got to that stuff. That's why um, you find them fighting against them. Those guys. It's a lot to it. Um, <laughs> you guys gonna have to check it out. Yeah, YouTube yeah. got some stuff out there. To, you can go to the Marvel stores and get the books. Really deep. And then you're talking about post Africa yeah. too, before it was colonized. Before all the countries came in and took a little piece of, you know, took everything away. Like when Belgium went and took Congo uh-huh. and, and the United States went and they took their part and Tanzania, all those different parts were given to different European countries, you know. So you got, mm-hmm. got post Africa because the countries were lined up a little different than it is now. All right. Yeah, I took some, I took a little bit of world Africa. It was good because it was a good okay. song. It was deep. <laughs> All right. Patrice, you got a question for I'll talk about Black Panther forever. You got a question? You still here, Patrice? 
<laughs> she said, wait a minute. Um, like, so talking about the movies and, you know, Black Panther, uh, would you like to play in a, a part of a movie like that, that type of genre movie, or what would be your favorite movie to play in as an actress? Well, it's funny how you said that. Uh, we just, I just shot a cameo just this past Sunday. Uh, there's a movie, you know, there's been a, quite a few movies being made here in Ohio, oh, wow. uh, especially in Columbus, you know, where we live outside of Columbus. Uh, Columbus is a beautiful city and it's got a lot of new, you know, new stuff. And John Travolta made a movie here last year. Um, there's been like a lot of movie stuff going on and there's a movie being made by an African-American author. His name is Joe Ponder and his brother, Jamel, Joe and Jamel. Hmm. You can Google them. And uh, they've written quite a few books, and one of the books is the crossover that won the game, which is the one that they're uh, just about to complete. It'll be out this summer, wow. and we I actually had a small part in that movie, and we just shot it last Sunday. Hmm. This is sports. So you said it's a sports that, movie. That's kind of like the first one. <laughs> you said it's a sports huh? movie. It's a sports movie. It's kind of like a movie about. Well, it is about basketball. It's about uh, a high school athlete who is really super great in basketball and I think they want to recruit him to go straight to the NBA that that whole thing mm -hmm. um yeah you gotta you gotta read the book and <laughs> see the movie because they kind of change stuff around a little bit I'm not mm -hmm. even sure how much they changed it but that's basically what it's about a guy who is you know had all these people coming at him because he's so great in basketball and you know everything that he went on everything that was going on with his family at the time and mm. you know uh his coach and his coaches and they got a lot of they recruited a lot of um uh former nba players that were they were all there on the set because oh, wow. that's when they did the actual basketball scenes and everybody's mm. like oh you know they're trying to shoot a movie here yeah. and people want autographs and taking <laughs> selfies and carrying on you know <laughs> and these <laughs> seven foot men are walking around it was crazy wow. you know <laughs> hmm. Set in Ohio, huh? and it was exciting. It was exciting. I I would love to you know to do more stuff. You know, if there was something, I was actually almost in a movie, but the movie ended up not getting made. Mm -hmm. uh, a movie here about a uh, a pastor who had done some ill stuff, and I actually got selected to play his secretary. Mm -hmm. And I met the secretary. I looked nothing like her, but they <laughs> they thought you know I did a really good job. <laughs> Secretary. I, I actually met her and I showed up looking just like, you know, how she was dressed and everything and mm -hmm. well animated female and the movie actually didn't get made. So oh. that's what happened with that. Wow. So did you finish it or just it just didn't make it that far? No, the, the we were in like pre-production going through scripts and that kind of thing. And mm. uh, something happened, some ill stuff happened with the person who uh, was the movie was actually about. Oh. And yeah, that can get kind of tricky. It was all on the news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that can get funny. Yeah, they, they talk about that. You can Google it. Wow. Yeah, they talk about that um, in, our, in our film class, too. Got to get all that paperwork done. Mm -hmm. It was not going to happen. <laughs> somebody going somebody to get mad. Yeah, it was that. It was some some stuff. Um, it, it was something. We were really excited because mm -hmm. I did know a couple of the other people who had been selected to be in the movie actually a couple of those people are actually in this movie that i'm in now too it, it's just funny how and this was this was about 12 years ago wow. um so that would have been my first mm -hmm. big movie because i actually had uh, a large speaking role in one of the major characters so mm -hmm. um you know we'll, we'll just see i'm not really you know i don't have any i want to be a movie star aspirations or anything like that it's just one of the other things that i do and you know, if an opportunity comes up and, you know, I'm a good fit and they like me, I like it, you know, I'll mm -hmm. do it. It's not, I'm not chasing after any kind of movie star fantasies or anything like yeah, that. <laughs> now, Nina, now, um, you living in, you said uh -huh. you living in, you living in Columbus, Ohio now, you said? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is it, is, does it, anything about it remind you of Philadelphia? Like, you know, growing up in Philadelphia? <laughs> um... You know, it, they're both very, very different. It, there's, they both have things that I love and both things that I don't love. You know, of course, um, I really did not plan to, to be here this long. I was actually going to go back home um, after college, but I ended up marrying someone from here and mm. 
and staying, you know, because I had no intentions of really, because I did love Philadelphia, you know. Yeah. I loved it there, you know, it's my home, and I, I wanted to be there, and I thought I would have a better opportunity of, um, of working in radio and television in Philadelphia than I would here. You know, right. but wow. uh, I got the internship and, you know, at 19 and and got married at 20 and I just ended up staying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because Baltimore and Philadelphia it look so similar. I, my wife and I went to visit Philadelphia. I said, wow, this looks like downtown in Baltimore, City Hall. It, all, it looks exactly the same. They do, don't they? You know, the waterfront and everything. Well, I there's had to bring parts home. of Pittsburgh that look just like Columbus. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? It's like, it is. It's like Pittsburgh is like a bigger Columbus. Mm. <laughs> I didn't like Pittsburgh. <laughs> I didn't like Pittsburgh at all. I didn't like what I saw. And I drew the, and we drove through there by mistake, but what I saw I wasn't really it. <laughs> you were lost? Yeah, we How was trying did to, anyone get we, lost in Pittsburgh? Yeah, we were trying to go to Poconos. My wife told me to take 95 oh, or something. Oh, yeah, like, y'all were lost. Yeah. Y'all were lost. Yeah, man, this is not the Poconos. This, this, this is not the Poconos, right? We've been driving for five hours. And this is not the Poconos. <laughs> you were lost, for real. Yeah, we were lost. <laughs> you know, I really like uh, Buffalo, New York. Also reminds me a lot of, oh, I've never heard that. of Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Huh? I said I've never heard that before anybody it, it said about Buffalo. Besides it's so yeah. cold. Um, I have a friend who does radio in uh, in Buffalo, and I've been back and forth, you know, doing concerts and you know helping him out. Mm-hmm. He does he does like a lot of the uh, the gospel concerts in Buffalo, so I've mm-hmm. been there you know quite a few times, and it, it does it reminds you a lot of uh, of of Columbus. And there's some parts of it that remind you of Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just amazing, you know. You going from city to city, and it it's just you know what city does not remind me of anything which is los angeles <laughs> <laughs> that's what my yeah. wife said <laughs> that's right. yeah. Yeah. vegas doesn't remind me of anything oh, it you sure know? Doesn't. yeah vegas is something else yeah it's mm. something else did yeah. you all go to vegas this past for the selling no i didn't but I've, I've been to vegas my wife and i we hang out there you know during our anniversary time this is our anniversary time really I'm, mm-hmm. i really feel like i should be on vacation because this is for years we used to take this time off before the kids and even mm-hmm. with the kids we just we found somebody to keep them but i felt like mm-hmm. if we would have we would have gone we would have just stayed the rest of the week you know, if we would have done that, mm-hmm. but it wasn't in our cars this yeah. year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Vegas, man. It's, and there's so many different parts to it now. It's not like you just got the old Vegas anymore. You got the new and the medium new and then the old, <laughs> you know, if you want to, if you want to hit a money drop, <laughs> if you want to hit a money drop, you know, you still got the old Vegas, but if you want to just scan your card, you got the new Vegas, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, for the millennium. <laughs> <laughs> and then the shows are like, I mean, it's always something to do. It's like you're thinking of two things. Eat and let's see a show. Yeah. All right, let's go watch a show and then let's yeah, go that's eat. It. Okay, we eat. We just ate. Let's go see another show. <laughs> that's your life. And yeah. I, you know, we, my wife and I, we poop, we, we poop out at 12 o'clock. We, we can't go no further. We thinking about sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, that city just goes, goes, and goes. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, Patrice, you got another question for um, Nina? Nina Taylor? So, well, I would like to know, you, you didn't mention Cleveland. Do you ever get to Cleveland to do any shows or anything like that? That's where I'm from. Do, so. I, <laughs> do I go to Cleveland? Yeah, she's in Cleveland. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Patrice, she's in Cleveland. Oh, you're in Cleveland? You know, actually, the person that I'm dating actually is from Cleveland, and I haven't, I'm sure I'll be going there <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> Um, but I like Cleveland. Um, I've been there a couple of times. Actually, um, let's see, the last time I was in Cleveland was like maybe 2010. Hmm. I think it was like around 2010 was the last time I was there. But I have a friend that lives in Shaker, whom I've known like, wow, almost 30 years. Um, the last time I was here where I spent some time, we would just kind of like, when they used to have all the boats down on the river, I don't know what they have now, but this is this is how long yeah. ago it was. They used to have all the boats. We stayed at the um, what was the name of the? I can't remember the hotel, but it was right there on the river. I had taken my uh, my ex husband there for his birthday, surprised him, picked him up, 
uh, from work blindfolded him, drove him to Cleveland blindfolded, and, <laughs> <laughs> and we actually went on like one of those dinner cruises, and then we went to a comedy show, and actually Bernie Mac was in town, mm. if you can remember how far back that was. Yeah, <laughs> Bernie Mac. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was the minute, yeah. Just I had that. gotten a ticket, so I said, you know what, I'm a do this for his birthday. And I took him to Cleveland. We saw Bernie Mac and uh, what was his name? A.J. Johnson opened up for him. It was a fantastic show. And we went on that little date. What was it called? Lake Erie Cruises. Is that what it was? I think that's what it was. It was on a boat and the food was fantastic. Everything was great. Did some shopping the next day. We just stayed out there like for like two days, like the weekend, and then came back. Wow. That was the last time I spent any real time there. Yeah. I don't know. Cleveland, Cleveland has a waterfront. <laughs> um, Patrice. Yeah, waterfront. You said we have a what? Y'all have a waterfront. Oh, yeah, we have a water. A nice, pretty, it's a pretty nice waterfront. I mean, we have, I think it's three boats that may go like the Nada to Queen and um, mm. the Good Time 1 and 2 mm. um, that, that go back and forth. And then a lot of the clubs and restaurants are on the water. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. going a little bit down, we have apartments that are on the water. So, yeah, we have a lot of a lot of lakefront area. Yeah, I mean, you guys have to. Um, if you see, if you ever get a chance to watch my movie, it opens up with uh, Baltimore waterfront. Beautiful, what they have done to that place is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So many places to eat. So many places. It's like, man, literally hundreds of restaurants and bars. You know, just go on foot and just or Uber and those electric uh, buses they have. Really, and new hotels. So that's what Sam, you guys come down here, you know, do some work with us on our television show. You you won't be disappointed. It'd be worth coming down here, you know, for a little weekend getaway or a couple of days. Uh, they've really done it up. You know, sorry, I didn't get a chance to take Paula G. Well, down to see, see the waterfront. She, she, and even the greater Baltimore has really been built up a lot. I mean, it really. I mean, like this where we are mm -hmm. right now. I mean, it's it's um it's really spectacular what they're doing. The Greater Baltimore. It all connects. The train connects everything from Greater Baltimore all the way to to downtown where where all the action is. They got you know, of course, they got the casinos now, and it's it's it's, it's, some, it's something what they're doing to uh, this area. It's really something. Of course, you know when you got Washington only forty minutes away, and a lot of people getting tired of that traffic, mm -hmm. they starting to come over this way now because <laughs> it's, it's a short travel, it's mm -hmm. a short commute. You know, you're talking 40, 45 minutes, you're at work. And the train is available. They got another high-speed train to take you to D.C. Because that's what, you know, all the mm -hmm. basketball is there. That's all we have for basketball uh, is with the Wizards. Yeah. So, um, like, the cities are growing, you know. So, that means it should be providing jobs mm -hmm. for everybody. That's what we want to see, growth and opportunities for everybody. You know, that's what we need. Well, do you remember the piece I did about two years ago? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I just think it's good because now you don't have to move to Los Angeles or New York or the bigger places to actually have opportunities. Mm -hmm. You can be right where you feel mm -hmm. comfortable. That's right. Even New Orleans and the places. Well, you remember mm -hmm. two years ago, I did a piece on the the best places for African Americans to mm -hmm. find careers in the, what's it called? The Metro DMV? Mm -hmm. DMV, what's it called? DM, DMV. <laughs> was number one. Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. Yeah, it was yeah. number one. Part of the mm -hmm. Gold Coast. They call that part of the Gold Coast. 95, all the way down to Florida. <laughs> yeah, because that's where you got a lot of your big um, defense contractors, all your government headquarters, N NAACP headquarters, the Urban League headquarters is here, the, the mm -hmm. uh, Red Cross headquarters is here, got FBI, CMS, Social Security, you name it. All the, And then you got all these museums. The yeah, Reginald Lewis Museum is here. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's a he was a billionaire. So you got a lot going on. And then our HBC, uh, we got Cobbin, Cobbin doing well, Morgan growing, a lot of growth with those two schools. So it's a, it's a, it's a great city, it really is. Um, just just trying to get that police force together. <laughs> That's what they're working on, trying to get that police force together. So uh, once we get that together, it's going to be the city it used to be. I, you know, we were just talking about the other day how. Um, no, I was talking to Johnny Ross, how I believe the reason why most of our cities have, uh, have turned into what they are today is because our police don't walk the streets like they used to to get to know the neighborhood, you know, play ball with the kids. I mean, I remember those guys used to put, put their stuff down and play, well, not their guns, but they used to put their stuff down to play basketball with us. 
shoot a little hoop, <laughs> you know, watch, you know, teach us how to ride our bikes. You don't got that. You don't have that anymore. And these were guys that were Irishmen. They weren't any African American police officers, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. You know, last year we have something called the Ohio State Fairs. Uh, one of the, it's one of the largest fairs in the country here. Mm. And, Last year, when you know, we, we, on certain days, you know, it's ten days, and each day they have like concerts. I mean, it's huge. They have millions of people who come from all over the world just to come and eat and walk and ride and come to shows and all that. So on the day that you know there was like an African American artist, you know, there there's there's a lot of police presence and all that. But when we came in, the police were just so nice. They were, like, smiling at everybody mm -hmm. and saying, hi, welcome. And I was like, did they tell them to act <laughs> like that? You know, <laughs> they were just, they were being so super nice. I was like, is this, a, are they going to get us all in here and kill us or what? You know, <laughs> we were, <laughs> it was just really, it was just kind of weird because they were like, hi, welcome. Welcome to the Ohio State Fair. And we were, like, looking at them like, hello, you know, <laughs> and it was just kind of, weird <laughs> yeah it's like you know but th that is that is something they, they should teach those guys to be more cordial with the public i mean you don't have to act like you stand in uh -huh. guard at the embassy you know like you know like i know a, like you know you're a person <laughs> you know, or at, the, at the palace yeah have you ever been to london have you ever been to london yeah they don't move they just they just look straight they just stand there, yeah. but I hope they'll take your head off if they have to. Oh yeah, my, yeah. My <laughs> uncle was an embassy guard. Yeah, he was trained to kill marines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always I thought that was you know odd that they they didn't train them that way because you figure like this: um, if a guy is coming to intent, he has something intentional that he want to do bad, and then somebody stops and say, mm -hmm. "Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the fair." And it's a police mm -hmm. officer. That may change his whole total yeah. outcome. He might just say. Oh, it's, I guess it's not it's not in my cars today. Let me just go have some fun. You know? You just never yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, the this demeanor. is not going to work today. Yeah. yeah. To change the demeanor of some. I mean, just like when people walk into a department store, when they, when you walk in, they don't pay you no mind. You just say, mm -hmm. I ain't paying for this shirt. I'm just going to put it on and walk out. You know? So, I, I, just, I, just, <laughs> I just think they need to, you know, like, I know around here, around here our subway store. The guys are uh, that run that store are so super friendly, so super friendly. They actually know our family. Um, they, we only have to tell them what we want. They already know what it is, <laughs> you know. But it just proves to you that they're listening to you and they remember what you order. I mean, we order the same thing all the time. But they, I'm, my wife, don't even have to open her mouth. They say, "Oh, are you getting a double meatball sub with American cheese only?" <laughs> That's for my son. And the teriyaki, they know our orders. It's because they listen to you and they and they greet you and they really friendly with you. So uh, I think that's important. I think the police mm -hmm. department really should change their whole, you know, theory or philosophy of how they do business in our neighborhoods, in our community. Because they are a part of our community. We pay their salary. We do. We, we pay in our taxes. Mm -hmm. So I think it shouldn't be like they should be acting like they're military. Because <laughs> to me, that's, that's the direction they look like. <laughs> Yeah. It, yeah, it was, it was, it was different, but they were just most pleasant and walking around. They weren't like staring at you like they were waiting for you to do anything. Yeah. Um, it just, it does. Like you said, it does change your whole demeanor. And I think that's anybody when people are pleasant to you, especially when mm -hmm. you're spending your money. Um, you're just trying to go have a good time, you know, you don't need right. drama. I'm happy, you know, that it was a lot, a, a big presence there. Cause if anything jumps off, you know, I want it taken care of immediately, yeah. you know, That's right. but it, it does, it does make a difference. And I think, um, you know, a, a lot of places where they have, uh, you know, high police presence, it's not like that. They're not going to speak to you and be nice and pleasant to you when you come in, you know, Mm. You know, and it, it puts you on edge like, yeah, what's wrong with him? You know, <laughs> or yeah. her. You who want to visit that place? You know, who want to, you know, take their time out and bring their family, you know, traveling across the country to visit that, you know? Yeah. You know, that's, that's not and it, they do. They, that, you know, some events do attract people from, 
from all over the country. Yes. But I'm looking forward to to going to uh, Cleveland to one of the Cavaliers games, you know. Yeah, that's um, right. That's something that we're going to do before the season is up. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. Get that, get that on your bucket list. See, LeBron. That's yeah. what we, we, we plan to do the same thing for my son, too. Well, I saw Michael hard. Jordan yeah. play there, you know, once. So, you know, um, yeah. that was enough for me. But I got to see LeBron, too. That's right. <laughs> I hear you. I know I missed that. That, Yeah, that was two things I didn't get to see was to see Michael Jackson play. I mean, see Michael Jackson perform and see uh, Michael Jordan uh, uh, play. That was that was two things. You never saw Michael Jackson ever in your life? Not not live. My sister had a chance to see the Jacksons play in uh, in in D.C. at the um, I forgot the name of that stadium at the uh, RFK, the famous RFK Stadium. She saw the Jacksons perform. Yeah. Didn't get to see Michael Jackson. I live. saw the Jackson five years ago when I was a kid. You know, my my stepdad was a promoter, and I used to see everybody. You know, everybody James Brown. You know, yeah. it wasn't any big deal to us to to be at a show or to meet somebody famous because we were around that kind of thing. You know, my mom was a singer; she sang in studios and sang for backup for for everybody. You know, Philadelphia is a big music city and. It it was just wasn't a big deal, you know, yeah. to go and listen to somebody with hers who was a, a major star or go to the mm-hmm. studio and hang out. Um but I saw the the Jackson five and the Jacksons and Michael Jackson and Janet and Wow <laughs> all of That's them. a blessing. I did see the Jacksons <laughs> though when they were performed at Tom Joyner um family reunion in Orlando. I did see the Jacksons. Uh-huh. They were really good. They were really good. They were, they were baby face mm-hmm. and tank and all those guys. And the yo yo. I got a chance to hug yo yo. She's so pretty. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> yo yo, the rapper? Yeah, she was there. Yep. Uh, my son okay. was at a, my, okay. <laughs> yeah, my son was at a football camp and she uh was walking across the football field. I said, Look at Yo Yo. And uh, I called her. She came over and everything, all nice and sweet. Yep. Yep. So awesome. All right. Nina Taylor, that's right, the voice. So Nina Taylor, every, <laughs> your voice is so um, you know, welcoming and and and, and people love listening to you. Um, we, what's what's next for you? Um, and I'm gonna give Patrice a, a chance to ask you a question before we let you go. But well, well, what's next for you? What's, what you want to do next? What's big? Well, I'm really excited. You know, uh, the gospel news is syndicated all over the world now. Um, when I said eight countries, that's that I know of. Uh, I'm sure because I'm on a lot of syndicated shows. Mm -hmm. So who knows? You know, I don't even know how many places, um, you know, I know that one of the syndicated shows that I'm on just recently went on in Lagos, Nigeria. And I know I'm on in London. You know, these are places that I know if, if the program directors or the stations don't make us aware of everywhere that their shows are playing. I mean, how would I know but I do know that I'm on over 360 stations here in the U.S., which is such a blessing. You know, yeah. it really is. And it's probably more than that, like you said, by being on your station now, you know, I'm in all these other places, which, you know, it's just it's just a blessing. But mm-hmm. uh, in the future, um, I'm looking forward to working more with artists, um, you know, with uh, gospel artists mm-hmm. um, to... Um, continuing on with the gospel news. Um, I was on and on, had the gospel news on television for nine whole months wow. in Chicago. Mm. <laughs> I really like to get it back on television if I could. You know, there was yeah. something that, you know, I went through a lot to get it. You know, you'd be mm. surprised how much I only had four minutes. <laughs> so it was even shorter than what you get. Yeah. I had four minutes that I had to, you know, it's a whole nother thing when you're on television, you know, you got hair and makeup and clothes mm-hmm. and, and lights and all this stuff. It, it was a lot, you know, to get it, but I really, you know, I enjoyed it. And it lasted for nine months. Uh, the show actually got canceled. Mm. So that's why it only lasted for nine months. So, yeah. But I, I'm looking forward to uh, doing more television, like you, you were saying, you know, that you have the talk show now. Oh, yeah. And, um... I'd love to uh, get a show. I'd love to have a syndicated radio show. Like um, I have a show here in Ohio Mm -hmm. and I also have a show in Texas, you know, it's in San Antonio, Texas. Um, But I'd love to have shows on, you know, other stations all over the country as well. That's right. 
<laughs> now, is it is it possible for the, the the station that you're working with now to to uh, you know allow you to use those shows for other stations? Because I mean, we're always looking for great new shows right here. Well, I I actually the show that I the show that I do here, you know, it's a live show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that I'm actually there in the studio doing it. I'm doing a lot of well, you know, it's an afternoon drive show, so mm-hmm. you do a lot of weather and traffic and closings and openings and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's a lot involved to it. You know, you give a lot of information. But the show that I do in Texas, I actually produce this show from start to finish myself. Mm. So I could actually take that show and use it on any station I want. I just have to change what I say Mm. because I'm doing that show specifically for them. But I was saying if I had a generic show that could be used anywhere, you know. Certainly, I would love to do more of that. Yeah, I mean, but you have plenty of podcasters that's working for other networks, and they send those shows out. And I mean, we got a couple of people that that, that um that they don't mention positive power at all when they broadcast. They just say I'm on Q so 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 so, and that's it. We just you know. Well, if you have a name of a show, uh, like you know, say yeah, just say it's the power of the power show. Mm-hmm. That's the show that they're they're getting. You know, right. is that show. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to say anything about the station because yeah. they know that it's like it's generic because it's gone in different places. That's you right. know, that's right. <laughs> that's what they should do. Like I mentioned it to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Idea. I'm going to tell you, Nina, my <laughs> wife was uh, she heard your news one time. She said, now that lady has a great radio voice. That's what she said to me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not saying you know, talking. one thing that I said that, you know, I actually had to uh, straighten out. And all this time I thought uh, one of my idols that I liked growing up, Mary Mason, she's actually not deceased. Somebody from Philadelphia actually told me that she had passed away like uh, maybe five years ago, which is not true. She's actually still alive and well, but she's living in a nursing home now because she's, you know, you know, up there in age, wow. but she's not deceased. And I said, my goodness, I said, how could anybody make a mistake like that? You know, right. who's actually in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> in Philadelphia made a mistake. No research done. Yeah. All right. Well, Patrice, you got one last question to ask uh, Miss Nina Taylor before we come. Oh, you know what? No ex- no question. Um, I really enjoyed uh, hearing you and to hear your story and talking to you. Um, mm-hmm. But I do wish you all the best of luck and many blessings in your career. It sounds like you you know you have a lot going on, all great, and you're going in the right direction. So I just wish that that just continues. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Today is uh, Patrice and our last show for the spring. Uh, we be coming. We're going to take a break, you know, because Jerry been on. Uh-huh. Too. We got to take a break. So, I mean, uh, I'm, you know, these, of course, my heart don't want to take a break, but the body's saying something else. <laughs> but, you know, we got to yeah. do, do, you know, so we can focus on some other things, too. So, yeah, and then in the office on the Absolutely. table, if you find yourself, you know, coming to Charm City just by accident, hey, like, give me give me a notice and we can we can have some guests in studio mm-hmm. for you. And if not, you know, we'll try to work on trying to get you here because we t- we've been talking to Patrice. That's too, wonderful. Well, you know. I will say, how far are you? From, I, I I plan to be in Philadelphia this summer. You know, I still do have family there, and we just love going home. You know, just if nothing else, just to eat. Mm, you know, that's right. I hear you. You know, nothing like the food on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what got us a lot of us in trouble. Because you know, they named Baltimore one yeah. of the fattest cities uh, in the country. Yeah, we right up there. With- so Baltimore is now the fattest city. The last right. thing I heard, Philadelphia was the fattest city. I said I could believe that. Well, I know the fattest city is going to either be on the East Coast or down South right. for sure. But you know why? Because <laughs> the people in Baltimore travel to Philly all the time for the the Philly cheesesteak. We want we want real authentic food, so we're going to travel there to get it. You know. Bring it back. Bring Absolutely. me one back, buddy. They say, bring me one back, man. You know, you find out somebody going to Philly from Baltimore. We don't care how long you're going to have that cheesesteak in that bag. We want it. <laughs> we want that greasy bag. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> we want it. Because, you know, That's they stopped great. making them um, correctly. I don't know what they're doing to our Philly cheesesteaks now. Nobody makes them right. They're not making them right? <laughs> not here. We got to go to Philly to get it, to get the, get the real one. I mean, just like anything, you know, to get the real nice, delicious hot dogs, you have to go to New York because the hot dogs don't taste right anymore. Here. I don't know. What's the deal? Yeah, you know, we're funny about our food in, 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 in on the East Coast. You know that. Uh-huh. We remember what it really supposed to taste like. So if we have to go back to that city to get it, that's what it is. 
<laughs> Coney Island, Philadelphia, you name it. Baltimore, crab cakes. You go to Nathan's Hot Dogs up in New York to get the great hot dogs. You go to Philly for the cheese steaks. And plus, we got great Italian restaurants here, too. And, of course, in New York, they have great Italian restaurants. And Chicago, the, the brick pizza, nothing like it in the world. Uh-huh. You, can't, you can't fabricate that. Yep, that's the way it is. <laughs> yeah, that's it's the food thing. And that's why we're in trouble here now <laughs> in the Baltimore area. All right, Nina, tell any final words for encouragement and, you know, anything you want people to know and um, where they can find you and, you know, anything empowering you like to say. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I just uh, I thank you all for, you know, your support of the gospel news for, I think, the past to possibly three years. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And we just want to continue to make it better and, and more entertaining and more informative. And um, I'm just looking forward to, you know, to uh, doing some more great things um, in the future and coming to Baltimore, seeing you guys in person. Yeah. That would be great. You know, I haven't been, you know, the last time I was in Baltimore was actually for a bad reason. So I'd like to come back for something positive. My dad actually became ill while he was in Baltimore doing oh, a play. Wow. Mm. He was an actor as well. He had written a play and they were on tour mm. and they were in Baltimore. And next thing you know, we had a call saying, you know, they had to take him to the hospital in Baltimore. So it'd be nice to come back, you know, for a good reason, because I didn't really get to see the city or anything. Just kind of, you know, ran down there to, to, get him, get him back to Philadelphia and to his own doctor. So um, it'd be nice to come back for a good reason. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like I said, if you want to see a little bit of it, you know, you can check out our movie on our yeah. website. You get a chance to see a beautiful uh, drone, aerial mm -hmm. footage of Baltimore in its finest, a beautiful city right now. Mm -hmm. And look, I, f I did find the first bio when you came on our show, and that was July uh, uh, 12, 2016. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got an anniversary <laughs> coming up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we got an anniversary. <laughs> well, I'm sure I've updated the bio. I hope since then too. <laughs> now I use the same one. <laughs> nah, I added some more you. stuff. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <what laughs> All right, y'all. That's Nina Taylor. We appreciate you being there. So before you go, Nina, we got one last question. Did you yes. feel the power? Did you feel the power? Double X I. Absolutely. <laughs> she felt the power. Patrice Jackson, did you feel the power? Did you feel the power, Double XI? I felt the power. She felt the power. We're going to miss Patrice Jackson, but you get a chance to hear Patrice on our late night radio show on Fridays. She'll be joining us. Of course, not everybody's going to be there every Friday, most likely, because the show starts at 11.30. But we're going to have a good time. It's going to be the party line on Late Night Talk Radio with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide and Paula G, The Voice, and Chanel Lynn, and also Shay Samuel, Gospel Award winning artist. So come on out and hang out with us on Fridays, y'all, starting at 11.30 with Late Night with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide on Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. Take care, everybody. We see you tomorrow night. We got special, special guests. So come on out at 9 o'clock and hang with us. All right? Take care. Peace, y'all. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double XI. Positive power. Listening to Gary Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Join us, you only need to do two things. Number one, you need to tune in to Positive Power Double XI Radio, the place where royalty rocks. Number two, tell your neighbor, don't look to the left nor the right, because we're going straight to the truth with our girls. Hi, this is Rock Life with Zion, Zion Jones, listening to Positive Power Double XI Christian Radio on Speaker Radio and Facebook Live. It's a love thing.
back, back and forth, forth and back, back and forth, forth and back, back and forth, forth and back. I've been struggling. Back and forth, forth and back, back and forth, forth and back, back and forth, forth and back. Lord, I need your help. Back and back, back and forth, forth and back. This is something. Back and forth, forth and back. I can't do it by myself. Back and forth. And I'm still doing wrong Feels like I'm singing the same old song Lord, I need your help Cause I can't do this by myself I have a desire, I have a fight I'm gonna press forward till I get it right
Not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, uh-huh. against, against powers, yes. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, yes. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Come on, I'm so visual and so physical, kind of analytical, way too critical to get with you invisible. I don't see you, I just see me, that's why I be lost in the sauce in this world. I'm hurt in the life I used to live, it's no longer working. People so when you look throughout history, but God intended us to have love and victory. So why we ended up in this place we don't want to be? We all are making choices that are not so healthy. Take up your armor so when the day you're evil come, you can stand firm and be able to stand your ground. Take up your word and do what it says. Remember to meditate and say all your prayers. Follow God's will. Oh, we, we can, can change, change history. history. Now it's time for us to do what we came here for Taking up the word, studying and, and being fruitful Being useful And being truthful Being strong in the Lord and helping people Lord, we need you to help us get through All the things we constantly put ourselves through Lord, people don't be smiling People all around the world are needlessly dying Mothers all around the world are crying for their sons Brothers doing silly things and dying by the gun Sisters in the streets pounding the pavement Hanging with some dudes just so she can get the payment We're getting caught up in the flesh This is why we're in this mess People That's hurting right. people, people living with regret But it ain't over yet, the best is yet to come So prepare yourselves to receive the sun The most high, the everlasting word Drink from the water and live your heart I ain't mad at you, you do what you do Know the time is coming when God comes back for you Are you ready for him? Yes, the second coming Will he catch you living? Or will you still be running? Yeah. 
Excuse you, she needs you, but it's so hard. Pushed her aside and now she's confused She's suffering, it's so complicated Yet she loves you How can you love the desire is driving me how can you love there's a struggle inside of me how can you love i can't even get close to you how can you love me how can i love you when i'm broken Feminine, even in the way he talks His thoughts confuse those around Because he wasn't taught He knows better His pain Choose to pray although it hurts. It's in God's hands. He's grafted, created this child for works. How can you love the desire? When 